Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It is December the 18th and we're looking at the last chapter of Amos and also the little book of Obadiah. Amos brings his surprisingly long prophecy to an end. He says to Israel that there will be no escape. He sees the Lord standing by the altar who says to him, Hit the hintel of the door, lintel of the door, so that the doorposts will shake, and cut them in the head, so that they will fall down dead. None will escape by any means of the house of Israel. The Lord asks, Will I not cut off Israel who have sinned against me? The Lord will scatter them among the nations, but they will not be completely destroyed. In a future day, the Lord will raise up the tabernacle of David and close up the breaches. The Lord will raise up the ruins again and build the temple as it were in the days of old. The Lord says that a day will come when the plowman will overtake the reaper. There will be, there will be such abundant crops that the reapers will not have completed their work before it is time to plough the fields again. The mountains will literally flow with the overripe grapes because the vine dressers will not be able to gather the abundance of the vines. The Lord will bring Israel out of their captivity and they will build their ruined cities. They will plant vineyards and they will live long enough to drink the vine to drink the wine. They will build orchards and eat the fruit. The Lord will plant Israel in the land and never to be uprooted from it again. Now that's quite an amazing thing. Now next we have the little book of Obadiah which describes the judgment of God on the kingdom of Edom. This is the shortest book in the Old Testament. The Edomites descended from Esau, the brother of Jacob. Why did God love Jacob but hate Esau? Well, the answer is found in this book. The sin of Esau was pride and self-sufficiency, and it comes out in his children, in the nation. Israel lived in the rock fortresses of the south. The Egyptian, the Assyrian, and the Babylonian armies put money and treasures there, where just a few men could hold off a large force. They lived in false security. They despised God and his promises. The book of Obadiah is divided into two parts. First we have the judgment of Edom and secondly we have the deliverance of Judah. The charge that the Lord brings against Edom was pride. They are so full of themselves um, that the Lord brings them down very low. He humbles them. You see, the Lord humbles the pride, uh, the proud. All the other nations despise them because they are so small. They think that they're so great, and yet the Lord will destroy the wise men and the mighty men. They will be destroyed. So what was their crime, Obadiah? Well, they were violent with their brother Judah. They looked the other way when Judah was in trouble. They rejoiced in the day of Judah's destruction, nor should they have come to Judah to rob them in the day of their trouble. The Lord will totally destroy this nation. When the day of the Lord comes, he will judge them in the same way that they acted, and they will cease as a nation forever. However, the promise of the Lord to Judah is that the Lord will deliver them. There will be salvation and holiness in the house of Jacob, the tribes of Jacob and Joseph will be a fire and Edom will be like stubble, which once it is kindled will be totally destroyed. Israel will possess the land and the kingdom will be the Lord's. Now, both of these um, chapters I'm going to call the last chapter of um, 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 uh, Amos and the first chapter, uh, but the only chapter of Obadiah, remarkable chapters. Let's do, go through them. Um, the, the Lord says some very remarkable things. For example, in, 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 the, in the last chapter, verse 2, he says, They, though they dig into hell, thence shall my hand take them. Though they climb up into heaven, thence 
will I bring them down. Though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them out thence. Though they hide, though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, thence will I command the serpent, and he will bite them. Though they go into captivity before the enemies, thence will I command the sword, and it shall slay them, and I will set my eyes upon them for evil, and not for good. Now this is a terrifying, terrifying prospect. Israel is so sinful that though they try to escape from God, even if they dig the ways into hell itself, and if they manage to climb up into heaven itself, if they got into the bottom of the sea, there the Lord will find them and he will punish them. Wow. Verse 5. The Lord of hosts is he that touches the land and it will melt. He's able to make the land molten and he will touch the um, it is he that builds his stories in the heavens and he founds his troop upon the earth and calls for the waters of the sea. The Lord is his name. Wow. And then we have the interesting thing he says, um, Behold, the eyes of the Lord are upon the sinful kingdom. I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saying, I will utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. For lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a sieve. Yet, shall not the least grain fall to the earth. What the Lord is going to do, he's going to take Israel, he's going to put them into the nations, and there he will sieve them like corn. Not a single righteous man will fall. Now that's an amazing thing. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say, the evil shall not overtake or prevent us. Now, <clears throat> notice here, the designation on those who are wicked is that they are sinners. It is the righteous that will be preserved by the Lord amongst the nations. <clears throat> and then we have verse 11 to 15. Now in these verses we have the most beautiful expressions. I'm going to read it all to you fully. In that day, and of course he's talking about the day of the Lord. In that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. Now what that means is, what the Lord's going to do, he's going to take the house of David, the actual descendants of David, he's going to take them up and he's going to raise them back up. They will be raised from the dead, but also they will be raised from obscurity and they'll be raised from um, captivity and the Lord will close up the breaches thereof so there will be lines of family that will be cut off the Lord will heal all those lines of the family and I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all of the heathen which are called by my name saith the Lord that doeth this so what Israel is going to do is they're going to possess the lands of the heathens. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman will overtake the reaper. So what's going to happen here is God is going to send such fruitfulness into the land that the reaper will not be able to complete the reaping before it's time to plow again. That is the extent of the harvest. It will be so great that it will not all be able to be reaped and the treader of the grapes him that soweth seed so the 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 bountiful harvest of the lord will come upon israel it says the mountains shall drop sweet wine and all the hills shall melt and i will bring again the captivity of my people and they will build the waste cities and inhabit them and they will plant vineyards and drink the wine and they will make gardens and eat the fruit and I will plant them upon their land and they shall no more be pulled up out of the land which I have given them saith the Lord thy God now many people say to me what is what is dispensationalism well dispensation is exactly this 
it's exactly this that there is a church God has a church but God has also Israel and they're quite separate to the church and they are scattered amongst the nations and God will bring them all into blessing again in the future that is what dispensationalism is and that's what these books in the Old Testament teach. People think that dispensationalism is something that's taught from the New Testament alone. That's not the case. Dispensationalism is, is built upon the teachings of the Old Testament in particular. Then we have the interesting book of Obadiah. And Obadiah is both a, a frightening and a terrible book. It's all about Edom. It's the prophet of Obadiah that was sent to the Edomites um, and, and uh, the Lord says many things about them but the main thing the Lord says here is the judgment that he will bring upon them and uh, for, beginning from verse 8 he says shall I not in that day saith the Lord even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the house of Esau and thou mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the house of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. See, there will come a day when the Edomites will cease to exist forever. The sons of Esau will cease to exist completely. And verse 10 says it, it says, For the violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side. In other words, they stood and watched while Judah was taken captive. Now there's a number of things. There's eight things that they did. Well, they stood on the other side and watched. They looked upon the day of the, of, of the, of the brother Judah when they were in trouble. They also rejoiced when Judah was taken in the day of their destruction. And you spoke proudly in the day of their distress. You should have, you, you should have, you should have entered into the gate and to the day of calamity. You should not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity nor laid hands on their substance see see what Edom did is they looted when the Babylonians and the Assyrians came for Israel and for Judah they looted um, and also he says you should not have stood in the crossway to cut off those that wish to escape see what they did they didn't just stand by and watch they helped the enemy they were treacherous and they stopped those that were trying to escape. And so because of all this, the Lord says, I will destroy you. Wow. Now in verse 15, this is my password for today. Because in verse 15, the Lord says something which is pretty remarkable. He describes how he will deal with the nations. He's not talking about how he will deal with Israel, but how he will deal with the nations. For the day of the Lord is near upon all heathen. Okay, so this is the judgment of God, the judgment of the living nations that Christ speaks about in Matthew chapter 26. He says, for the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen as thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head so what the Lord is going to do is he's going to deal with the nations according to how they treat the children of Israel and whatever they do whatever they whatever policy they have that will be the policy that will return upon their own head okay wow <clears throat> Um, and uh, let, let's read the rest of that little passage because it's quite important he says for as you have drunk upon my holy mountain so shall all the heathen drink continually yea they shall drink and they shall swallow down and they shall be as though they had not been 
You see, the nations of the world in the millennial kingdom will not have any representatives from the house of Esau. Of of there will be no Edomites there. They will be a completely wiped out civilization. It will be as though they had not been. Now that's quite shocking, isn't it? But then what does it talk about Israel? From verse 17 onward, it talks about Israel. It says, but upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Now, what that means is they're going to take possession of the land that has been given to them. They will come into their inheritance. It says the house of Jacob shall be a fire and the house of Joseph a flame and the house of Esau for stubble and they shall kindle in them and devour them and there shall not be any remember remaining of the house of Esau for the Lord hath spoken it. So the destruction of the Edomites is going to be at the hand of Israel. And then he goes on to talk about the various um, territories that will be that will be occupied uh, forever but I want you to notice verse 21 it says and saviors plural shall come up upon Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau and the kingdom shall be the Lord's now I don't know why it's the word saviors in plural I'm not sure it does appear to be as if the Lord will raise up a number of people that will bring deliverance to Israel and they will judge okay Esau and the kingdom will belong to the Lord so there we are these are world shattering events each of the minor prophets is a matter of international importance they are astounding prophecies well God bless you great to talk to you and look forward to catching up with you again tomorrow bye for now